Welcome guys, everybody. Another episode of Junk Removal Made Simple brought to you by the Junk Removal Authority. My name is Lee Godbold. Uh, myself and my business partner build up Junk Doctors, Junk Removal and Hauling to a $2 million a year business by the end of year five uh, out of North Carolina. Junk Removal Authority, I'm president of Junk Removal Authority, uh, which is a consulting, the, your source for consulting and support services for the junk removal industry, providing a complete business package, uh, AdWords management, search engine optimization management, uh, call, uh, call center campaigns, and general consulting services uh, to the uh, junk removal industry. Uh, you can reach us at 919-466-9322 or uh, give us a call or uh, visit us online at junkremovalauthority.com. Rolling right into it today on Junk Removal Made Simple, we are talking to you about having a results-oriented organization. So what is, we'll call this a RUE. What is a RUE? A RUE is a company, uh, RUE has a company culture where it is known that results matter. So everybody from the company your pre president, which is likely yourself, it's my, me in this case, uh, from the company president down to the janitor that cleans the uh, floors and washes the bathrooms, we know in a room that, it, that the company culture uh, has it where results, we know that results matter. Um, so what does this mean? This means that you uh, clearly outline a, a, what's expected to get done, a timeline on getting those tasks completed, and uh, standards to which those tasks are expected to meet. And if the task is finished but not up to standards, or if the task is not complete, then the people don't go home until that's done. They are expected to stay until the task is complete. Or at least to the point where they are at a good stopping point. But if they plan on finishing a certain task and the deadline's due, they stay however long it is until the task is complete and is up to standards. You create a culture about that. I, I can't stand when people gets to be five o'clock and everybody right at five o'clock they're out the door. They ain't hanging around till five oh one. That is not happening in a room. A room has it where result where task matters. It's not time, it's task. So completing task is the important thing and people stay until the task is completed. Again, that goes all the way from yourself as the president all the way down to the janitor cleaning the facility. This right here is going to make your people more efficient. So what do I mean? I mean if people think that they are going to get off at 5 o'clock no matter what then they're going to be taking a little extra long coffee break. They're going to be cutting up and, and talking and stuff like that when they ought to be working. In a room with a results oriented organization, uh, your people know they are expected to stay until the task is complete. That will make the people more efficient. For example, we have a policy that any of our stuff, any of our items that come into our, come into our facility before 3 o'clock p.m. Uh, for sale, so we sell items, those items that come into our, facility, into our facility for sale are listed. Every item we get before three are listed for sale by the end of the day. So uh, we, that the, the particular person that handles that knows it doesn't matter if he's finished at 5, 5.30 to get those items listed or it could be 7 or 8. He's expected to stay until the end, all, everything's listed. Now, he's paid hourly. That particular guy is paid hourly. So we're paying him for that extra time. So, you know, if you're still being slow, sometimes you got to say, man, you got to pick the game up. you got to pick it up. you got to pick it up. This ought to be able to be done by 5, 5.30. But he knows no matter what, he's expected to stay until, um, he, uh, until the task has uh, been, been completed. Um, people need to be called out. People called out over poor performance.
So, if somebody, doesn't matter how long they've been with the organization, doesn't matter their title, or anything, if they are not, if they are not performing, if they're not getting their tasks complete, and they are not um, performing them uh, up to standards, they need to be called out. Now, this may sometimes be in public. It's generally not in public. It's generally a private meeting. But it doesn't matter if the, all the way from the top, you yourself as the president, to right beneath you, all the way to the bottom, you know, be it a janitor cleaning, uh, calling out people on poor performance uh, is a must. Um, and recognize people on the opposite end, recognize for great performance. Now, not average. Don't just tell somebody they're doing a great job if they haven't really been doing a great job. Recognize for great performance. If they've been busting their tail, going above and beyond, getting their tasks done, getting tasks done that we're really expected to do too, recognize those people for great work and pay them uh, for great work as well. Give them bonuses, raise their pay, do what you got to do because if you get people like that, you got to make sure you pay them right or they uh, will eventually, not necessarily right off the bat because these people, a lot of these guys like that are very loyal, but at the same time, they're gonna, there's going to come a time where somebody else is going to notice how good of a job they're doing and even if they themselves aren't going out there looking for another job, an opportunity is going to come with them. People that are ambitious, people that work hard, they put off a certain, uh, they put off something that, that people like myself and, and other real go getters and people that can recognize talent, people see that. They smell it. I don't know if they smell it, they smell it, they see it, and, and they're going to be like, hey, what are you doing right now? Would you like to come and work with me? And I can pay you this, this much amount more. So uh, always make sure you get those guys paid well or you will lose them. People like that are few and far between. You got to make sure you hold on to them. And you know what, guys, you can tie their pay in with performance slash sales or combination of both. Get them feeling like the harder they work, the better they do these tasks, the better job they do, the more money they're going to make. Tie them in. Make them feel a little bit like, make, make them feel like they own a little piece of the pie. You know, if they're, if they're going to go out, out there and, and bust their butt and, and work hard, make them, make them feel like they got a little piece of that pie. They can enjoy some of that pie by uh, getting, getting that raise um, from doing a uh, uh, job uh, well done. And, and, and your real top performers, I mean, make it where they can make serious money. I got our content uh, and marketing creator coming in. Starting, he's already getting started at part uh, part time hourly basis. His first official day is June first, when he goes full time. I told him the way we, we did his pay structure, where he gets a base salary and then he's tied in with the sales of the organization of, of Junk Removal Authority. So the better JRA does as far as sales, the more people we reach, the more people we help, uh, the more we achieve success they haven't before. Then, then our sales are going to keep going up. If we do one, if we do something good for one person, they're going to buy other products from us. That means our sales are going to be going up. One of our first things we got to do is make sure we're reaching those people. Make sure we're giving out enough content that those people realize we know what we're talking about. Make sure we give enough content that are actually helping people, regardless of whether or not they're using our services. We've tied his performance into that. I told him he's got he's got potential to come out go come out next year, make hundred thousand uh, dollars over this next year. And I told him, man, I hope you make three hundred thousand dollars. You know, I hope you make as much as you possibly can. Some people that do this, they tie pay into performance. They tie they tie pay into sales, and then they cap it. What kind of bullshit is that? Is your pay capped? Hell no, you're paying capped. Your your pay is not capped. Why are you going to reward somebody when they get you up to the point where they make one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and then you're going to cap them for anything over that? It's, it's selfish. If you're doing that, it's simply because you want to make sure that person is not making as a ton of money, and they could be making more money than you. Listen, if he's going out and making three hundred thousand dollars, he very well might make more money than me for that particular year. Now, long term, the value of that company is going way up. You know, the value of our company, uh, you, you know, myself and and, and uh, the couple of the partners we have in our Jug Move Authority uh, business partners. You know, that that equity is going up. That value is coming up. There's a good chance he's taking that three hundred thousand dollars. And he's taking it home, you know. The three hundred thousand we might make is going back into that business because we're 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 going we're, we're going to inject that business with more services than we've got a 
just a huge list of an app we want to develop. We have uh, we want to improve our services even more than they already are now. Uh, we've got a course. I can't elaborate a whole lot of that. We've got some some great video training uh, operations manuals that are going to come out. It's going to be like nobody's ever seen before in the service industry. So all the money we make is going to be going back out. It's going to be going back into that business. This guy right here could very well. I, I hope to God he does. I hope he makes more money than I do. I hope he makes three hundred thousand dollars over the course of this next year. Now it's going to be tough for him to do, yeah. But but I hope he does it. And hell, if I'm going to cap it, I ain't going to cap it. Oh, I, I, I'd love the dude to be able to make a million dollars in a year. Do not cap this. If you're setting sales goals, if you're setting performance goals, if you're tying somebody's pay in to performance, don't put a fucking cap on it. Let them make as much money as they possibly can. Don't be so freaking selfish and cap the amount of money your people can make for great performance. It's bullshit and it should not be done. Um, you need to uh, constantly be bringing people in. Always be hiring. So always be hiring. Always be bringing people in. You got like to bring them in. And kick them out. Kick them out. Isn't that a song? I can't remember. It seems like there was a song about that. But yeah, you're going to bring, you're gonna bring them in and, uh, and, and give them a shot. You know, if they seem like they're good in the interview, bring them on in. If they, if they seem like they can hang and, 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 and operate in a room in a, in a results oriented organization, bring them in. As soon as they can't perform and you've addressed it, you've tried to train them a little, you know, a little bit and you've decided it ain't going to work, you're going to kick their ass out. Bring them in, kick them out. Bring them in, kick them out. you got a whole cycle going on. Bring them in, kick them out. Bring them in, kick them out. Always be bringing new people into your organization. Keeps everything fresh, keeps people from getting comfortable. That's a good thing. Comfortable people do not perform. Comfortably, and that goes to yourself. One of the biggest mistakes you can make as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, is to get in the period you're comfortable. I got, I got a neighbor, friend of mine, making damn good money. He makes, he makes, he makes quite a bit more money than I do. He's making, bringing home uh, over a million dollars a year, and he's had some years he's probably made two or three. Uh, bringing home, not, not, not grossing, bringing home. But the dude, he's so freaking smart. He got comfortable, and he settled at that a million a year. He could, he and and he's happy. He's happy enough. But I, but but now he's at the point. He's a little bit. He's much older than I am, and he's thinking about his legacy. And he's thinking about the time. You know, he should have started this twenty or thirty years ago. He got comfortable. He got comfortable fifteen years ago, and he should have. He should have. He should have kept riding that thing hard and growing as big as possible. And uh, that you know, there's a lot. When you get comfortable, you lose productivity. He could be making. He could be bringing home ten million dollars a year now. He is a phenomenal product. He's a phenomenal guy. Just a great guy all the way around. Had he stuck with it, had he stayed real motivated, super, super motivated. He works hard now, but, but he takes periods off. Had he had, he had, a, had a, a super motivated outlook all the way through, that dude would be making $10 million a year. So um, you've got to stay motivated. As soon as you get comfortable, that's when you go down in flames. Um, I'm a pilot. One of the worst things you can do, they, they say with, with pilots, you're, you're most dangerous uh, your first 500 hours of flight time. Um, let's see, no, I'm sorry. Well, I can't remember the exact statistics, but it's something like between uh, 100 hours and, or between like 100 hours and 250 hours, you're, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're real dangerous. Now, from 250 to 500, you're not all that dangerous because uh, you've gained skill. You do 100, 100, 100 to 250, you're no longer flying with an instructor, um, and uh, you're, you're new, so you don't have a whole lot of skill. So that's the reason you're dangerous then. From 250 to 500, you've gained some skill, but you're still not comfortable. Between 500 and 1,000 hours, that's the point right there where you're real likely. I think you're more likely to screw up between 500 and 1,000 you are any other period um, because you get comfortable. Now, and then what they say is if you hadn't screwed up by the time you get to 1,000, there's a good chance you aren't. But a lot of people screw up between 500 hours and 1,000 hours because they've gotten their skills gotten better, so they've gotten real comfortable. And they mess up. And then once they mess up, if they survive it, if it doesn't kill them, or in this case a business, it doesn't run them out of business, then a lot of times they won't make that mistake again. They might, but a lot of times they won't. So uh, the same sort of thing, guys. Do not get comfortable in your business. Now, people will recognize when mediocrity is not accepted.
So, we, we've had this happen before. We let our guys get a bit comfortable. They didn't want to become a team leader. But we started hiring. We started hiring and uh, we started promoting people to become TLs and we hired enough people where other guys that weren't performing weren't getting hours. And uh, they're like, what, what's going on? Well, you're not performing. All of a sudden, they picked their game up and they became a phenomenal team member because of that pressure. You got to give them pressure. It's like a, treat it like a sports team, guys. The people that perform get the PT, get the playing time. The people that do not perform ride the bench or get cut. That's the way it is. Treat it like a sports team. If LeBron's production dies off, he ain't going to play. He might not get cut because he's got a heck of a contract. But uh, he damn sure ain't gonna play as much if he starts uh, only averaging six, seven points a game and you know turning the ball over and all that kind of stuff. It's not gonna happen, probably not. But you know, one of the greatest players of all time. Some would say the greatest. I say Michael Jordan is the greatest. But uh, if he stops performing, it doesn't matter what he's done ten or fifteen years prior. If he stops performing, he starts uh, riding the bench. And, and that goes back to this is a, that's a point right there. Longevity doesn't matter. So, if somebody has been working for you for two years, five years, ten years, um, and uh, their production all of a sudden drops, you don't cut them any. You don't cut them a whole lot of slack because they've been there a long time. You meet with them and say, "Hey, what's going on? Why have you dropped off? We need to get your performance and productivity back up, or you, you got to leave." And they say, man, I've been with you, I've been with you for 10 years. What's going on? And I say, yeah, yeah. You know, you say, yeah, man, you've been great. You've been great for me for 10 years. You ain't, you ain't great for me right now. The present moment is what matters. This is one of the biggest mistakes that management makes. The federal government is the world's worst with this. We got, we got probably half the federal, probably 80 percent of the federal government workers out there are comfortable. They violate every single principle right here. If we had somebody come in and clean house and, and, and run the federal government like I'm talking about running this right now, everybody's taxes could be lower and we'd have a freaking surplus. Um, but they're a perfect example. They don't feel any pressure at all. They're not going to lose a job, so they don't have any pressure at all to perform. So longevity does not matter. It doesn't matter. To, uh, uh, one week, six months, two years, ten years, thirty years, or fifty years. Performance drops off, they gotta pick it up or they gotta leave. Um, one or the other. Now, if somebody's been with you a real long time, maybe you don't make it sound quite that harsh. You take care of them, you do whatever. But the point is, is they have to go if performance has um, uh, dropped off. Now, this is one thing you always hear. People, the, the general consensus in most business books and most, that, prof, that professors, college professors write and whoever else is that turnover is a bad thing. I, on the other hand, believe turnover is a good thing. Brings in fresh faces, fresh ideas, keeps people on their toes. Right there, guys, that is why turnover is a good thing. Again, bring them in, bring them out. Bring them in, kick them out. Bring them in, kick them out. I want to remind everybody that I always have a rotation of talent coming through. The people that perform the best get the playing time. The people that don't have their hours cut back, they either quit or they're moved out of the organization. You always keep a constant rotation. Keep people uncomfortable, keep them on their toes, keep them performing for you. Um, that's the reason you have uh, team members is for them to make your the organization money. That is the one reason you hire anybody to save you time, which which makes you money because your hourly rate goes up. You're working a little bit less. You're working on stuff that's more productive that brings bringing in more money, uh, or just to increase the amount of money um, you are making. You've got to remember, guys. This is also this, I've been guilty of this. I. You know, I'm, 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 I'm talking real tough right now, and I've, and I've gotten pretty daggone tough uh, on my team members. Fair. Respected. Fair. Some people don't like me. A lot of people have, have, we let go don't like me. They didn't perform, um, and, and we moved them out of the organization. But and we got some more that are probably getting ready to get moved out, too. Um, that's, that's constant, though. I'm acting like that's a one-time thing constantly. It's going to be people coming in, people going out. You've got to remember... You are the boss. 
So every organization needs one person that makes the final decision. Now, take input from many people. Your best team members, your most valuable team members take input from. Your business partners take input from. Anybody, uh, experts in the field you're working on, whatever you're working on, take input from. One person makes the final decision. It could be you have a vote. You could, it could be you have a round table. Conv this is my decision so far. Convince me otherwise. And you have people give you negative arguments all the way around the table. And, 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 and your mind very well might get changed, but one person makes the final decision. Generally, your instinct is correct. So, now, now that doesn't mean your first, your first choice is correct. That doesn't mean the very first thing you thought is correct. But when it comes down to it, if they have not, if you, deep in your soul, they have not convinced you that what they're saying is the right way to go, almost always go with your instinct. But oftentimes, you'll get convinced. I'm, my initial thought on stuff is, is, is off quite, quite often. I won't say the majority of the time, but quite often, uh, I'm convinced otherwise from a different, you know, from, from making a decision. Maybe... 15% of the time. Um, so, uh, and that's a lot. That's a lot. It's been, and, and those moves for the most part have been good. So, remember though, you're the boss. You take input uh, from many people, but you make the final decision, or one person makes the final decision. We'll say one person. Makes final decision. Okay, this is a big point. Everybody will go lame. Racehorses, all racehorses. What's the name of that the horse right now? Uh, this one that just won the Preakness and won the Kentucky Derby. Uh, uh, justified, I think it's Justified. That could be a, year, a few years, years back. I don't follow horse racing too closely, but uh, Justified, he's won two, two of the three. If it's Justified, this horse has won two of the three of the Triple Crown. At some point, he's going to go lame. It could be the next race. It could be a couple years from now. At some point, he goes lame, and he has to be gotten rid of. He, he, he becomes a breeder, and when he's no good at breeding, and then he's not healthy anymore, at that point, you know, he like a die and get put down. But at some point, everybody goes lame, and that includes yourself. What do you do when somebody, when, when people go lame? You either, one, you get rid of them, or two, the first thing you need to do is, why are they going lame? Are they bored? Uh, are they tired of this job? Do they have talents that we, we could use, we could utilize somewhere else, including your own? I have gone lame with certain things. I will go lame with certain other things. And what we do at that point is we find somebody else is probably better at that particular thing than I was anyway. We bring them in. You, we get to the point that I'm doing what I am best at and what I enjoy doing. We have other people in place doing what they're best at and what they enjoy doing. Now, I'm, I got my hands on every single part of the organization. I'm involved in everything within uh, Jump Knockers and Jump Removal Authority. But, uh, I, you know, when I get lame on something, I'm going to bring in somebody to replace me. And when you have people go lame, it's your obligation to your organization, to your family, to the, uh, yourself, to your other employees that you get rid of a lame person or you get them in a position where they are no longer lame, or you figure out what's going on and you correct the lameness. Everybody goes lame. Don't let it cripple your organization. So, one of the biggest things I want you to take from this, though, is all this tough talk, all this toughness right here. You must hold yourself to the same level, to the same expectations. For example, I'm here to, in here tonight, I'm, I'm recording this video about two hours later than I want to. I got other things I can do. However, what was one of those rules? If it was a task that's supposed to get completed today, it gets completed today. I'm holding myself to the same exact standards I hold everybody else within the organization. People always talk about push or pull management. Push as far as rewards, incentives, or excuse me, 
pull as far as rewards and incentives, push as far as, far as you do this or you ain't going to be working here anymore. You do this because you're expected to do this. Uh, that's, that's push. Um, you need both. A lot of people, a lot of business books say you need pull. You need pull. Pull is good. Pull does work. But a push and pull organization is best. Recognize good work. Give bonuses. Sometimes you set incentives for good stuff, good, uh, good stuff, but you got that push that either this gets done or you don't work here. You push and you 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 push and you pull. You do both uh, for for the best uh, results, guys. I want to make this clear. You owe it to your family and yourself to get as much from your people as possible. You've gone out, you've quit doing your, the previous job. You might have been making good money before. You've taken debt out of you on your business. You've bought all this equipment. Uh, your, your thought, your mind is all, almost always on business. You work a tremendous amount. That's a sacrifice you're making. You're away from your family. Uh, a lot of times when you're working, and even sometimes when you're with them, you're thinking about business. Now that that's an, that can be a problem right there, but but that, that's my point right there is everything your business consumes literally everything within your life. You owe it to your family and yourself to get as much profit from each person that you bring into your organization as possible. What you are going to also find is you also owe it to your team members, to those team members that are doing their part, that are busting their butt that you set up a pay structure that they get bonuses for for success, that you're not putting up with people that are not performing, that are still that are making good money. You're not putting up with people that are not performing, that are negative. You're not, you're not putting, it up, uh, putting up with that in your organization. You owe it, again, you owe it to yourself. I'm going to say this again. A lot of business owners make this mistake. You owe it to yourself to make your business as profitable as possible so you can have uh, make, make a bunch of money and have a lot of freedom in your business. And what you'll find is by you doing that, all your team members are also going to have a better life, the ones that stay. The ones that are no good are going to leave. The ones that stay are going to have one hell of a job that they enjoy. Another episode, Jug Removal Made Simple on Results Oriented Organization. Always call us at 919-466-9322 with any questions. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Hope everybody's junk removal business. I hope this was beneficial to everybody's business. And uh, we will talk to everybody real soon and be back next week. Thanks, guys.